It always goes back to the wild boar noises, doesn't it? Okay, for crying out loud, how long is this going to go on? Yo-y! Hey guys, it's a Saturday morning once again. Everybody's still breathing. Well, I guess technically not everyone, but if you're out there and you're still on this world, then I hope you're having a nice Saturday morning. The sun's out up here in the Great Cascades. It's going to be a beautiful day. But first, before fun is had, work must be done, if you could call this work. In this particular instance, this work will take the form of mapping. So, I'm just going to get out ye old boring pen here. And I don't mean boring in a derogatory way, it's just very simple. So, get your shape dynamics on, squish it just a little so you get some chiseling. Don't bother with transfer. I'm going to draw in a layer. I just have this sort of, uh, I don't know what this is, I just spray painted some... Um, some casual gray here. I'm gonna get some black going and we're probably going to be working at a pretty close distance on this. Okay, so what the heck? What the heck are we doing, Hank and Fernet? Look at how I'm gonna zoom in here. Okay, there we go. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Rune Hammer. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Um, I hope you got your coffee, your orange juice, your soda pop, your whiskey, your cereal, your cinnamon bun, your granola, strawberry shake, whatever it is you have in the morning, because we're going to be here for a spell. What do we got? Okay, so you can't see this, but I have a piece of paper. I know. This, these are still around. You can print data on paper and read it. I do this so I don't have to alt-tab. While I'm drawing, even the, the, the distraction of alt-tabbing is too much for me to endure. Apparently so is wearing pants, because I'm in my onesie right now. <laughs> I guess, does a onesie include pants? Is it like a shirt attached to pants or is it just a onesie? Is it in a category all its own? I don't know. These these things, who will ever know the answers to these questions? Okay, so I have a great commission uh, coming in here from a man, Seneca, and thank you, first of all, for the work and the opportunity to do such a fun project. Uh, second, this is a city map. So uh, they're using a sort of a town. What's the slurping noise? Oh, I know, it's slurping. They must have a town sort of at the center of their um, campaign. So he wants this large two foot by two foot high res map of this town um, with these specific little parts and pieces to it. So he's got a, uh, a description here for me and he's got a couple examples and then he's got this kind of reference image but the, this stuff is so tiny I can barely, barely see it. So I'm gonna, there's looks like there's a market, there's a barracks. So yeah, I'm gonna, and it's sort of a, oh wait, he's actually got the layout specified too of the town. So I might have to, um, I might have to improvise on that a little bit because I'll never get this done if I'm constantly looking at this piece of paper. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do my town, I'm gonna catch all the thematic elements, 
And then toward the end, I'm going to start, you know, lassoing and moving parts around and make sure that I match uh, the dream that he's having for his city here, okay? Because we want to do this so that it fits their campaign. So this is quite a project. Um, so his description is the city uh, sits on the plains, nestled between mountains in the north, forests on the south. Okay, nice. Um, the town is called Sharpsborg, which is great. Um, has a lot of dwarven citizens, so I'm on board. Uh, mix of people. Uh, it's near mineral-rich mountains. Um, there, it's very well fortified. Wide walls made of stone. It has about 2,000 citizens. At its center, the Jarl's Hall is up on a hill that's fortified. And then the town branches out on spokes from this hill. And on the north part of the city are these big kilns where the dwarves work. Okay, so I'm basically... This is awesome. So I'm basically making like a dwarven Viking town um, that is sort of surrounding this cool central sort of manor or house. Love it. Love the idea. And I'm supposed to do it sort of um, semi-isometric, kind of like my Ghost Mountain map stuff. So here we are. We've got our little pen going here. Um, I'm at 25%. So let's go, let's go all the way into 50% and see what we're... Something's going on with my brush there. That doesn't look so good, does it? It looks gross, y'all. What's going on with this thing? This thing's gross. There we go. I had some kind of shenanigans going on there. I don't want shenanigans. There we go. That's much more betas. All right. So I'm going to just start right in the center, and I'm going to do the top, and then I'm going to kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to fill out the egg. Okay, so enough talk. Hey, Hunter, thanks for throwing a few bucks in the skull. <clears throat> yeah, and uh, welcome everybody to Saturday morning. It's time to draw for a few hours and uh, see if I can get this thing done in one sitting. Um, if I can, I'm going to save my client some cash. Uh, if I can't, then I'm just going to do my best and rock on. So let's just get started, shall we? I still do not like the line quality I'm feeling here. So I'm all the way at 100%. Okay, my line quality looks good there. But I'm like in tiny land right now. So I just want to give you a sense. So here's my first rooftop. I'm going to be doing probably hundreds of these. So let's just get started with one. So yeah, it's a masterpiece, right? Okay, but now all I want to do is give you a sense. There we go. So that's going to be one of the larger buildings. Um, probably could go about twice that size for one of the largest roofs. The roofs! The roofs! So something is still not pleasing me about this line quality. I am unhappy with it. I'm, am I on the right preset? Here's my preset. Go here. Ah! It's my spacing. Let's tighten up the spacing. Ah, there we go. Okay. So, uh, in the course of doing all the stuff that I do, you know, I'm constantly flipping my brushes around and I'm, I have the worst Photoshop habits when it comes to like saving my brushes into sets and being all organized and cool. Um, why am I back to... I am awful today. I'm telling you, I am just awful. There's something grungy about this line. Do you guys see that? Do you guys see what I'm seeing? It's past a certain squish. I get a grunge and I don't know why. Look at that. Hmm. Oh, there I know why. Because I have shape dynamics on. There we go. All I want is my Shape dynamics to be my uh, width of my line. I don't want my my brush to follow my direction in this particular instance. Now, sometimes you do. Um, why do I keep clicking the same things? I am like sort of a mess this morning. But you guys will forgive me. There we go, finally. Okay, can we please get to the drawing part now? Good God, man. Good God, man. Have you lost your, are you off your coconut? So you guys are going to have to entertain yourselves on this particular stream because this is going to be a big project. You know, I'm going to do part of it kind of 3D and I'm do parts of it kind of not. And I'm just going to sort of let it flow. I'm just going to let happen whatever happens here. 
Okay, so there's the sort of the first roof, and then there's this bigger one, and this has these cool like gable dressings on it. And this is gonna be not only my Yarrow house, but um, it'll, it'll serve as a sort of an architectural guidepost for the rest of the town. So I can get a little bit of a sense of what's going on here in this town as far as architecture goes. So I'm gonna do these gable dressing things. I'm sure they have a cool name, but that's not uh, something I have uh, access to that information <laughs> at this time. <laughs> you guys, I am a disaster today and I apologize. I am a complete wreckage. A wreckage of a man, a ruin, a mere husk. Okay, so you see kind of what I'm what I'm dreaming up here. And I'm going a little slow because this, this is gonna be the weirdest and hardest part is just sort of setting my tone. You know, like what's gonna become rules for later? I don't know yet. I don't really have a vision for what I'm doing. Like right there, see, I, by doing that, I make a huge rule for later, which is this whole town would be lit from the right side. I think I'm kind of comfortable with that rule, but yeah, see, so it's like this light's gonna be coming down this way. And that's gonna be a rule that I'm gonna be living up to that pain like many, 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 many times. So I wanna make sure that life is good with all that. Okay, I think there's this sort of, generally we're gonna do a semi-Gothic style, so that means tall, thinner shapes. And remember, it's easy to get, really get fixated on this one little building, but this is just one of many, these are 2,000 citizens in this town, the town of Sharpsburg. My little dwarven town. So I think too, I have a sort of a, a universal symbol for dwarves, and I'm just gonna stick to it. It's the chevron. And I just, I just use, it's like my shorthand to say dwarves are kind of hanging out here. And then especially if it's uh, royalty or if it's a building of, um, you know, non-common significance, then, you know, you'll have those chevrons on there. And we'll do some chevrons on the walls and we're just gonna play around with chevrons a little bit. So there it has these foundation pilings. And this is kind of my, my Jarl house here. You've got a, these cool little lanterns. Out know, there, this is just sort of the, the the gathering hall next to the main house here, and I want to avoid too much uh, shenanigans with my my pen getting thin on me, because the lines are going to get too small when you look at the piece as a whole. And so what you can do is you on your shape dynamics you can turn up your minimum diameter, like that. That way, even when I like let up all the pressure on my pen. I won't get a super, super tiny thin line. So I don't have to be so stinking careful like I was just a minute ago there. See, so like that's gonna be my minimum diameter. And that may seem a little thick right now, but remember I have to do this whole thing. So I'm gonna want my pen to have a minimum diameter that isn't too tight. Just a bit smaller, there we go. All right, we are underway. The hard part is over. Now it's just a matter of doing all the work. You guys know me and my theory is I really do believe that the first moment on almost every project is the hardest moment. And that's not just creative projects or art projects, just the first moment is very hard. I don't know if my, is my stream quality really, really crummy or is that just my, my laptop? Are you guys seeing okay quality? Or is it all lame and choppy and pixelated? Because that would suck. All right. So we got this little Jarl's house, and it doesn't quite feel that, like, royal and epic to me. So um, it auto-dropped. I don't know what that means. Here, let me try. A little quality is good. Okay, thanks, Jonathan Perez. I appreciate that. It's a little pixelated. Oh, well, that's not good. Let me see if I can. Yeah, my stream quality is pretty crummy here. Um, forced it back, but it's good. Hey, there it's good. Okay, cool. Just checking. I don't want you guys to be putting up with doo-doo. You know, who wants doo-doo in life? Nobody. Well, I mean, 
it has its place. <laughs> okay, uh, so I'm going to do some little thingies that don't have purpose. And these are the kind of the, the, the welcoming structures that welcome you to the hall. Because I got to get my butt in gear here. I have like a lot of things to do as far as buildings. So I just need to get my groove on. So if you guys watch me do uh, Ghost Mountain, you saw like how once you get your, your really like your momentum going with these type of projects, you can really start cooking. You can start just filling in space and making it look like it all fits together. And it just starts flowing, right? But this beginning part can be really tough to find your feet as far as like stylistically what's going to be okay. How much 3D do I really need and how much can I just kind of you know pretend and not really do all the hard work you know how much how much noise do I need on the ground you know like this kind of stuff I, I don't really know yet but I like where I am so far this is a fun little land I'm in a fun little land so if we remember this is the, the sense of the overall map so the, the central house is gonna be here I'm also supposed to leave a little bit of room for some close-ups around the sides of the map um, but frankly the way that this project is specced, I think, will be prohibitively expensive for my customer, my client. So we might need to scale back some of the ambition of it because it is really, really ambitious to do all these close-ups and all this detail, all this stuff. You know, that could really wind up costing you a lot of moolah. Moolah. Too much moolah. Little thingies on here. Okay, so this kind of welcomes you up. And so now there's like more to this like there's another structure back here but it's kind of just back here in shadow it's just here to be cool right and then it's got a couple windows back here just like that and see now this is more like a sense of what um some of the 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 town at large could look like is that really simple building back there okay then there's another little hall back here um, and this one's sort of seen at the side. So, you know, my sort of version of isometric is not proper isometric in any way, shape, or form. It's a, uh, it's sort of like a side view that you're seeing in perspective. Like, I just kind of let it, let it happen, you know. I'm just happy to be here, so I try not to get myself tangled up on, am I doing this right, or am I doing that right, or, or what? just kind of, whatever, just going with it. Just going with it, like on the Ghost Mountain map. I think that's what he's dreaming up. So now I'm just getting, I'm fixating on this doorway because it gets so much attention. There we go. Cool. So that's kind of like the Jarl's house to me. That's just most of it right there. And then it's fortified and it's on a little hill. So let's uh, get some fortifications around it here. We're going to do these little ramparts and then there's going to be a gate here and you know do you really want to just walk straight into this gate and then up these stairs to go to the structure it's a little bit corny it's not very architectural but you know what it's okay it's okay because it feels fun I hope it feels fun. Sometimes I don't know because I'm just so inside my own stuff. I'm just in a in a weird. Okay, remember this is on a hill, so I want to do a little bit of. Well, I'm really like mumbly today. Why am I so mumbly? I'm like I'm losing it, guys. I'm losing my touch. All right, so we don't want to see that surface. We don't want to see that surface, right? Because that's where our wall is, and then that's where our wall is. Oh, my arm. My arm. I just wanted to pull that line, so I got a good line out of it. And then this wall we're kind of seeing right behind the towers. I'm going to leave a few gaps for dirt. Leave some dirt. So you see how that's starting to form there? Here's the oops. Here's the top of the wall. My leg just fell off. My I have a little perch for my my bionic leg down below the desk. And every once in a while it just flops right off of there and just like it's got a mind of its own. Skynet. Alright, so here we go, here we go. Here we go. Uh, we got a tower back here. That's like the worst rhombus I've ever drawn. Okay, there we go. 
So yeah, I'm really, really beating myself up about things today. I don't know what my deal is. All right. You said you'd my, be my dad. All right, there you go. And then this is just gonna kind of go back there because I'm tired. I'm tired of working on this same little wall, giving it too much time. So just kind of tuck it. Tuck and run, man, just tuck and run. Okay, so now we got our hill to do. So this is the Jarl's little, so see the wall, it's like backed against the wall here, which I do like that effect. That feels kind of cool. And then you've got a little courtyard here and there's some grass in there. Maybe um, another sort of chevron shape here. Some little cracks and stuff on the walls. Don't want to do too many because I don't want to look like ruins or anything. Okay, now I need to get some grounding. Grounding is sort of my catchphrase for, you know, enough black ink that things will sit on the paper. Like they'll, you know, you want that. If things don't, aren't uh, grounded, they feel like they're sort of flying or floating, and that can be really weird. All right, there we go, there we go, there we go. This little thing, I think, is kind of dark, and this little thing is kind of dark. But you see my cheesy excuse for lighting is I just go to the left side of things and just reinforce the line. And I think somehow, yeah, this might be dark back here. What in tarnation? So I have this lamp, and I think I stepped on it or something like last week, and now it wobbles all the time. No one wants their lamps to wobble. <laughs> nope, that doesn't work. That's too weird. Too weird. Too old to start the training. So was I, if you remember. Oh, shut up, Obi-Wan. Everybody likes you, don't worry. Okay, so I, I'm not happy with this as finished quality, um, but I am happy enough to keep moving, which is what I need to do if I'm gonna get anywhere. So remember, you gotta think like in the hole with something of this scale. You can't just be like, I'm gonna draw this house forever. You know, I could really improve it, improve it, and keep on going and going, but instead, I'm just going to tell myself, you're done for now. Look how, look how strongly I resist. I just keep going. But I can do this little detail and that little detail and this little thing. All right. Hi from Seattle. Well, hello, Mary Weaver. Hello from the Great Cascades. And hello to Jans in the Ukraine. Living that Eastern Bloc life. Actually, the Eastern Bloc is like 80s, right? That's completely gone. It just sounds really cool. All right, so here's the hill. There's the bottom of the hill. Here's some sort of stuff on the hill, some shapes. Remember, this is a dwarven, mostly dwarven city, so if you have a hill, it's gonna be sort of cool and rocky. Not just like a hillock. And then there's a road going up here, like so. Some Commander Mark stuff right there, and then that's cut into stone like Helm's Deep. And there's these little thingies that like have the little address on them. <laughs> little pylon thingies. I don't know what those are. It's like where the guys stand, you know? If there's like guards, that's kind of, the, they stand by this little thing. And then this line I don't like because it's spread the, the hill base too much. So there's actually a bit of a more of a steep sort of outcroppy part to the back of the hill. And there's the bottom. That, that tangent isn't the best, but again, remember, I gotta keep moving, I can't fixate. It is not easy, but... Many of life's greatest things and rewards are not easy, so we're just gonna buckle in. We're gonna strap in and feel the cheese, as Max Power would say. Okay. Hey Runehammer, how do you get inspiration for all your ideas? Boy, that's a that's a sweeping question. Jeez. How do you get inspiration for all your ideas? Well, I tell you, sometimes it is very, very hard. You know, if life if life is beating you up a little bit and you're having some hard times, feeling lonely or 
you know things aren't going your way or maybe you're having like a health challenge a health problem you know that you can't you know heal up quickly and you're struggling or maybe you're struggling with cash or you're, you're working too much it can be very hard to find you know sort of inspiring ideas sometimes so on the one hand um, you know like happiness and, and prosperity can just make inspiration just kind of pop out of the ether right you're just you're, you're happy and your life is going well and things sound fun to do and so you kind of just wind up doing them and it just sort of happens now unfortunately most of the time in our lives we don't have the control of those circumstances so we can't just wait around for our circumstances to be good or we'll wind up you know like never inspired and so that's where like I think uh, you know sort of the life of a more professional creative person can be challenging you know a lot of people definitely uh, uh, you know talk about a, a professional creative life in a very you know exalted way like how cool would that be and so on and so forth but because you can't control your moods and your circumstances in life it can be really challenging to get inspiration sometimes you know if life is hard you know ideas just don't sound neat they don't catch your attention the same way um, so I don't know that's the first thing that comes to my mind when you ask such a big question but your question the operative word was where right where do you get these ideas and mostly I, I wouldn't even say that they're ideas they're kind of they take the form more of desires like um, you know I want to see blah right I, I want to do blah whatever that may be I want this or I want that and then that desire is where you know the ideas will start flowing from because I want to satisfy that desire so you know I want to you know feel what it's like to be Conan or something right, <laughs> right? something like that and then from that you say well how are we how are we gonna do it let's get started and then that's where you get more into like idea creation and stuff like that but I, I really do believe that the root of getting inspired especially in an ongoing way is to be honest with your desires what do you really want each day you know it's like I was uh, I don't know if you guys listen to the podcast but like like in the podcast I was saying you know you gotta make your bed and you gotta make your bed in your head you know, those are the first two things you do every morning. You gotta make your bed, and then you gotta tell yourself, what is it that I want today? And that's the first step to going and getting what you want. And, and for me, a lot of times, creatively, what from the outside may look like an idea is much more in the form of like a desire. So, I don't know if that made any freaking sense at, at all. Um, hey, Steven. Uh, yeah, I'll probably ride my bike down to Portland this summer for sure. Go down to that big crazy game store down there and kick around on the curb and drink a Slurpee or something. Be a degenerate. I'm good at that. So I'm just doing these uh, banner posts right now because I'm, I'm really trying to get this feel that like this is where the dude, the main, well, it might not even be a dude. It could be a female Jarl. Right? Is there such a thing? I mean, hell yeah, there is. I don't think Skyrim had any female Jarls. So genderist. Okay. So here we are. So I'm, I'm still sort of not quite satisfied with how, you know, poppy it is. It doesn't feel quite poppy enough to me. But instead of critiquing endlessly, I hope that answered your question, by the way, is like, where do I get my ideas? I... I don't know. I just wake up and I say, you know, what do I want to do today? And try to be honest with myself. And if I'm lucky, what I want to do is very closely coincides with what I need to do. And then that's going to be a really good day. You know, if I have a commission to do or if I have a project, writing project or something like that, or I want to finish something to get that good feeling, and that happens to be what I need to get done, that's going to be a really fun day. When they're not one and the same, oof, okay, that can be a difficult day. <laughs> All right, so here's the hill, 
and then this town radiates outward in spokes and so I'm gonna start getting a little bit of a sense of what's going on and we're gonna go up toward the kilns first so there's a street like huh and you see how like perspective just instantly kind of breaks down and so here's a street but that's gonna be interrupted by some buildings there's like a bending street here we can erase some of these lines as as we need to there's a street here that kind of goes up like that so, you know I, I don't know how this is gonna work I just want to give myself some grounding I just don't have anything and uh, as far as like what's on the the guide file remember he gave me this pretty detailed file I don't know I, I can't look at that constantly while I'm trying to be creative I'll just wind up fixating on what he's trying to explain to me and I won't do a good job. So you do have to know your own sort of creative affectations and play with them. You can't go against them. You'll, you'll wind up very frustrated. So this is the kind of the avenue where the, the kilns are going to be. I'm not sure what, how to visualize the kilns. Um, morning, Hank. Carry on my wayward son. There'll be cheese when you are done. Lay your weary beer to rest. So there's a block back here, which is kind of like going to be like the potter's block. But that doesn't matter because I need to get into some monkey business right friggin' now. Let's get into it. Pow, pow. Pow, pow. Pow, pow. Pilly, pow. Pow, pow. Pop, 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 pop. Put the egg in the bag. Boom, boom, boom. It's a town. Boom. Look at me go. You can't stop this train, baby. Woo! Okay, boom, boom, boom. This guy's got a weird house, though. Boop, boop, boop. Whoa, he's got a square roof. So does this one. Toot, toot, toot. So does this one. Tap, tap. Then there's these, like, dome people that live over here. Nobody talks to them, though. Poor guys. So lonely in the domes. <laughs> Lay your weary head to rest. And don't you clan no, 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 so you guys just stare at those little blobs for a second. Dog bio break. Need to pee, bud. Need to pee. Need to pee. Carry on my way the word son. There'll be peas when you are done. Lay your weary beard to rest. Don't you have a no bottle of Oh, great. He wanted to go outside to make war with the neighbor dog. Great news. Okay, so now remember I have this kind of left light. And I'm I'm just sort of off right now. I am not really liking what I'm doing that much, but I'm just going to keep going. You guys ever get that? I think that's a tougher creative challenge than getting inspiration. Is you're you're trucking along and you're kind of looking at what you're doing. And you're like, I don't know if I even like this. What am I? Where is this headed? Can be a tough feeling to to push through which is part of one of the reasons that I do the cartoons um, show at all it is a push it's a way to to push myself to keep going on Saturday morning and to you know to stick with it to keep hounding on the projects these are just like little stoops and I'm imagining like all these little stoops sort of facing the same kind of direction. And then I'm just going to put little floop, little, these little floop, 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 
I don't know why no one talks to the guys in the domes because they kind of have cool little houses. You know, maybe people should open their minds up a little bit, jerks. So once again, I can't get too into each one of these little flinky dinks because there's a lot of these to do. Okay, so I'm trying to just get a, get my bearings here. Is this going to work? Is this going to be a city? I think the answer is yes. So there is a weird moment here where like what's behind is going to meet what's in front and that's going to be kind of whoa, right? Hank, your offness is because you're not drinking. <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. How do you make a custom core book look all nice? That is another colossal question. Look all nice? <laughs> I'm talking about random lore pieces illustration. Um, with ridiculously epic amount of work, basically, is <laughs> the answer to that question. Practice for years. Give every piece equal attention. Put more and more work into it. Refine the layouts over and over and over. Never give up, never stop, never stopping. So here's this moment that I was worried about. It's like when the background is gonna meet the sort of what's the foreground. It's right here and it's weird. But we are men and women of courage and so we're not gonna shy away. We're gonna just face this weirdness together. So this is like where the streets are meeting on this sort of avenue that surrounds, you see like, see how that weirdness starts happening? The perspective gets so weird on your brain. But in time, at least if I'm who I think I am, the weirdness will pass. We'll, we'll make it through it through sheer force of will. Kind of like your question, um, how do you make a, you know, a core book look good? Well, I don't mean to be a troll with the answer, but the answer really is that, that there is no simple answer to that question. I mean, it's it's a lot of work. It's interdisciplinary work too. Like you need to be able to write, you need to be able to draw, you need to be able to do layout. Got to make sure you have um, one or more creative confidants in your life who you can not only bounce ideas off of, but who, who can help you clean up your ideas, help you clean up your execution, proofreading, all that stuff. Man, there's so much that goes into it. And uh, if you guys come on out to RageCon in Reno next month, I'm um, doing a seminar or a talk or whatever, a panel um, at RageCon uh, about like nano business and branding and RPGs and stuff like that. So hopefully get to do that talk at some more cons throughout the year, but that's going to be the first one in Reno. This line is not acceptable. This is wrong. That can't be straight. Did you guys see that? There we go. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. That circle just gave me such a, a grounding point. I feel totally safe now. So I'm gonna start, how do I even do this? Uh, it's like almost a side view like that. And then this one is seen sort of from the rear almost. It's crazy. It's crazy land is where I live. Hey, you guys ever wanna Come on up to crazy land, just pay me a visit. All right, so here's the front, the front is dark. Well, not necessarily, anything facing left is gonna be dark. So these guys must be crazy because they live like right on the Central Avenue. Ooh, I like adding a couple little blibbits on these front stoops. It kind of connects them to the street in a fun way. Little flippity jibs here, see that? Kind of breaks up the lines of the street too, which is, is challenging me. This guy has some stairs. He's on little stilts over here. Yeah, just those nice little flippity gibbets look more like you can live there. <clears throat> now the kilns, this is interesting. So I'm starting to get the structure of my town. Uh, we're half an hour into things um, and I'm starting to feel how this could become a town. Whew. 
man and there's just no certainty you know it's like well you guys know this everyone who tries to do creative things knows this is like there's no guarantee that any of this is going to be good <laughs> you can work on this crap for hours and just wind up with with dookie dear lord dogs being a jerk out there barking at people for no reason well he's probably barking at a dog he doesn't really bark at people and I don't like when my neighbors let their dog bark so I shouldn't let him bark and it's the circle of life <laughs> but I'm on TV I'm busy there's just a little wall here and then I wanted to do a a concurrent wall and then this just sort of in my mind divides like what's going to be a sort of an industrial area the kilns with this more residential area I imagine there's going to be some like smoke and some cauldrons and some machinery in the, in the kiln area so there's just these kind of little casual walls and these these corners I didn't think were going to be kept but they are so I need to clean them up little Kirby Corners. Hello, my name is Kirby Corners. I'll be your tour guide for today. This is off. Do you notice too, I don't have a lot of overlap yet and, and I need that. I'm gonna have to face the overlap demon. See, it's, it needs to be like that. I can't just keep avoiding overlap. So there's gonna like be a sort of a dense area where like more people live. There is certainty, but do you have 112 people watching currently? Is that for your confidence? <laughs> you know, I gotta say, Pyronide, um, having people watch while you draw is insanely nerve wracking. And anyone out there who draws a lot knows exactly what I'm talking about. Um, it is very, very nerve wracking. <laughs> I don't know if I'm ever going to get used to it. Um, but you guys know me. I tend to like to... I don't know. I like to confront my weaknesses in some way. And challenge myself. And, and drawing in front of people is just like... Especially, I mean... There's almost always on cartoons more than 100 people. So it's like... All your flaws and all your hesitation and all that stuff are just laid bare. And Oh my god. This just makes you crazy sometimes. <laughs> These guys are friends, so they share this little walkway here. Hey, you want to come over to my house, uh, Stone Toe? I got some golden gar here. You should come over. We'll watch the jousts. <laughs> Just little pads and things. Now, I don't know the the exact sort of spirit that my my customer is dreaming of like you know this isn't the most serious art style but he, he did you know he commissioned me so I'm sure he knows my style and he did mention Ghost Mountain and you know Ghost Mountain has this real kind of relaxy kind of somewhat light-hearted style okay we're gonna do a different set of buildings here they're gonna be almost like Wild West buildings and they're gonna be right along here and we're going to be seeing them kind of from the back. So you see like a, an angled roof. And they're all going to be next to each other. Like that. Hey Jim, go tell your brother to stop barking at people and, and other animals, will you? Could you do that for me, buddy? Go communicate with him in dog language. Okay, a few of these have like these extra boards. Out. Like this would be almost like a saloon row or something. And then I also need to do some more sort of stone structures. So there's going to be a, a stone district. Because a lot of this is still kind of, you know, timber built. Remember, left side dark. Half the time I don't know if I'm saying this stuff to you guys or if I'm just talking to myself. <laughs> Remember, Hankrin, 
Color in the left side. All right, here we go. There's a lot, a lot to this. I don't know if you guys saw the craziness of the uh, the Ghost Mountain stream when I was drawn for eight hours straight, but that's what happens with with mapping. There's just so much to do. You know, to get the feeling of a large place takes a lot of small places put together. All right, it's starting to feel kind of like a town. Let's do this this sort of kiln area because I think it's going to be cool. Okay, there's the the street. Um, and you know what I should do? I'm going to hit the control save button. Okay. All right. So the kilns are like these like nuclear reactors of the fantasy world. There's going to be three of them right there. Um, don't rub it in, Magnus. The snow just thawed here. Good morning from Arizona. Hey, Victor Diaz is in the place to be. Okay, so here's what the kilns are going to be like. They like these cooling towers on these little buildings. You having fun out there, Coon? Barking, running in circles, scaring off squirrels. Okay, these. See what I mean? Like a cooling tower on a nuclear power plant. You know, <laughs> like a kiln. <laughs> I don't, whoa! I don't know what's wrong with me. I have an idea, but it's not really table conversation. There we go. The Kilns of Sharpsburg. And I, I, I want sort of a sense of some blockiness here and some, some bricks and stuff like that. So I'm going to start thinking in little bricky shapes. This kiln, like, you can actually go in here. Oh, see, that's a fun shape. I like that one. That's one of the first good things I've drawn. <laughs> oh, he's beating it up, aren't you? You always got to beat yourself. You got to kick yourself in the nuts, don't you, buddy? Um, he's got a little sign up here. Cooper, could you please go breathe somewhere else? <laughs> All right, this one has like a, a different entrance up here. So my dog, the, the coon, he'll like run up and down our fence line um, chasing a squirrel, just back and forth. It's crazy. Then he comes in here, starts breathing. Right, so here's the little work, little work huts and houses of different kinds and shapes and structures. I don't even know what I'm doing. Just trying to fill in space, really. I mean, it's just like get the little, all the little pieces to just kind of be and start occupying. You know, it's just like, like drawing a salad. Imagine drawing a salad. You know, where do you begin? Which little piece of food? And and who knows? You just kind of start drawing little giblets and over time you'll start to get that feeling of a salad. I don't know what that, that was like one of the worst analogies imaginable. So here they got some little other little structures going on here. Oh, oh, oh. Alright, and then here's like there's a main sort of Please go to the main potter's house and discuss your needs with Stone Toe McSteggleton. Stone Toe Steggleton runs these kilns and has for an age. A master sculptor and potter. He's your man. 
Use your dwarf, sorry. So right now I'm really in um, like I guess what you could call like faith mode. Faith mode is I'm just trying to just keep going without doubting if this is all going to come together. Like, is that like the only thing I'm talking about today? Am I a one note refrain today? It was a uh, it was a bit of a difficult week, I must admit. It was that. Hope you guys are all doing great out there. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. We've got 117 nutso people getting their Saturday started the Runehammer way by chilling out with some card tunes. Now, there's, there's more to this, too. This is like, he's got like a... Um, like a crane set up back here. And then there's this big supply of bricks. I don't know why. But we're just going to start playing with it. We're going to do this like big brick thing that they got going on. And I don't want to mess with the tangency on that crane, so I got to kind of go around it a little bit. But this, this pile of bricks is kind of like back here, and it's going to extend. It's going to kind of be all over. These sloppy dwarves are just stacking bricks everywhere. No regard for human or elven life. Little stray bricks. There's a couple little stray bricks in the street. I am going to have to do like cobbling on the streets too. That's going to take about 300 years. <laughs> oh, you know what I need? A sip of coffee. Mm. I am renewed. I'm swimming in the renewed. There we go. Get some lines on these rooftops here. here. Now I'm going to do smoke. Maybe I should just do it right now because that way I won't draw unnecessarily underneath it. But I just wanted to do this real light kind of. These guys aren't that environmentally conscious. It is a fantasy world. Almost like Lankmar or something, you know, like there's all this hearth smoke coming up. Okay, and then I kind of wanted to do like some, some bricking on here. And, you know, you do these alternating lines like this. Bricking. It's a technical term. It's when you're bad at basketball. <laughs> All right. There we go. Well, that's some fine bricking you've done there, son. Now erase it all and go inside. But, Father. I love to draw bricks. Quiet, boy. Go inside and help your mother with the buffalo stew. I don't like buffalo. I told you that last week. You insist on making me eat buffalo. I don't like it. Wait a moment, you're not my son. You're a lizard. Hello, Daddy. I'm a lizard. <laughs> You're no lizard of mine. Not with that attitude. I don't want to be a lizard. I want to be a frog. No member of this family will be a frog, boy. You'll be a lizard, just like your mother. Oh, man. What's going on in that chat? I don't even know. I don't even know. You guys just entertaining yourselves over there. Okay. I'm going to return to my little... Uh, oh, look at this. There's a different little area. 
this area is not quite so um, uh, well off as to have so much room and little paths and little charming environments it's gonna be more of a I wouldn't call it a slum but we're gonna do like these sort of cubes and stuff oh man you know where there's some really crazy amazing urban density is Mexico City if any of you have seen Mexico City it is insanely cool how all these cubic shapes are stacked and interconnected and then have all these bright crazy colors like man just nutso urban bonkers this town is bonkers I don't want to be a lizard daddy I want to be a frog no member of this family will be a frog. You'll be a lizard and you'll enjoy it. In time, you may even make a few lizardy friends. I don't want any friends. All I want is to be a frog and to be free. You'll receive neither. Boy, wow, that's dismal. You'll, <laughs> you'll neither be a frog nor free. For no free frog walks these halls. But to be a frog is to be free, father. With the jumping and the croaking. I'd like to be a frog. I don't care what you say. I make my own decisions and I decide to be a frog. Okay, so this is my little cluster of buildings here. I don't know what this frog lizard thing is. Um... <laughs> you'll be a lizard like the rest of this family none of you will be frogs but father all of my friends are frogs I thought you said you have no friends I don't I only have frogs I've been collecting them they are my slaves <laughs> I hope to one day form a frog army a sort of slave labor force with which we will build off-world colonies for the earth you'll do nothing of the sort boy you'll go inside and help your mother with the buffalo but my mother is a buffalo father and like me she dreams of being a frog okay is this surface just too big no it's fine I'm gonna commander mark this bad boy I want to be a frog. I hate you, father. Now, now, boy. Stop this frog nonsense at once. You're no amphibian, boy. Well, not yet, father. It takes work. I'll have to earn my frogginess. <laughs> <laughs> through hard work and jumping I've seen you jump boy you are no frog I've seen stones jump higher than you you don't like anything I do father I don't like you boy never did you're ugly I'm sorry, Father. All I ever wanted was to be a frog. Oh, beep, boop, beep, boop, beep. There's a little walkway in there. There's a little thing. <laughs> to be a frog is an honor. <laughs> oh, a croaky honor for the ages. So, look, there's my little, uh, sort of my little complex of buildings. Now, I need to start linking the Jarl uh, architecture house to the other ones. And I've got machinery, so hang on just a second. The sun comes out and the world just goes bonkers. Someday, I'm going to prove you wrong and I'm going to be a pro.
and then you and your whole lizard family, you'll see, you'll see all my froggy dreams. Father, I have a two by four here with a nail in it, and I'm going to hit you with it. I'm going to hit you with this board, Father. No, you're not. I found this board in a local construction area, and I'm going to hit you with it. You'll do nothing of the sort, boy, and you're no frog. <laughs> Father, you can be so cruel with your lizard heart. I'm going to beat you now, boy. Prepare for a good licking. Puh, puh. So what do you guys think of my town? How big is the lizard? Well, I mean, they're, they're, this whole family is human size. Oh dear God, that is depressing. Whew. That's all I've done, guys. That's all I've done. Father! <laughs> the leaper must awaken. <laughs> <laughs> and then he opens his little froggy hand with little suction cups on it. So it'd kind of be the opposite of Dune, right? It'd be more of a swampy planet. Amphibious. Okay, so I wanted to start to link some of this look to the Yarl look. And that means putting these gable dressing thingies on here. Um... Get a little more fantasy going. So let's do, there's a sort of maybe a, like a churchy building right about here. And it has one of these things. But you know, you guys, I'm kind of getting a little concerned here. I'm not sure what the budget is on this project and to do a whole city at this detail level could be a bit out of scope. See what I mean? Like I'm not really doing a lot of my buildings in a way that just expedites time. I'm like kind of having fun with each building. You know, rather than being like, you know, making buildings in three pen strokes. And so I'm starting to get a little concerned on that front. This could take me days, you guys. Days, I say. Maybe if I panic more, it'll it'll be okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna do a weird door here. Father, the deed is done. I am now a frog. I'm a sort of a froggy being. My dreams have come true, and I will now leave the family to go to the swamp with the other frogs. Good, good, da, da. Stop beating me, father. Da, 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 da. There's a, uh, like a courtyard in the middle here. A gathering place, if you will. For children to play and old men to gather. So there's gonna be these little things. I don't know what these things are, but I need to speed up. I just cannot keep drawing so many little things. So I'm gonna do these things. These could be little pieces of furniture, or they could be cobbles. They could be all kinds of stuff. They could be little shrubberies. Like 
this is some shrubberies here. Shrubbery! I believe your courtyard has got a lot of shrubbery. Actually, that is a really good innovation right there. It's doing shrubbery. It really just gave me a lot of 3D. It's filling a lot of my space, giving me an organic feel. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, this neighborhood needs shrubbery. Ooh, that means I throw a few trees here and there. Why didn't I think of this? Bit of shrubberies. Just here and there, shrubberies. Just small shrubberies. Some of them might be rubbish heaps. Some of them might be shrubbish heaps. Is your house covered in shrubbish? <laughs> shrubbish. Come on, guys. That's pretty good. You'd have to really be a real grumpy Gus not to like shrubbish. Got these two little, like, cedar trees here on the sides of this. This wall. You have to be a grumpy fellow not to like the word shrubbish. I want to be a frog. My dreams have come true, and I am now a sort of a froggy being. I'm a sort of a creature, if you will. Part frog, part boy. I have the legs and hands of a human, and the rest of me is a frog. And you get a shrubbery, and you get a shrubbery. <laughs> One for you, and you, and you, and you. Now, the, the kilns up here, they don't get shrubbery. I know, it hurts. It hurts to think about them missing out on life like that. But, you know, things aren't always fair. Especially when it comes to shrubbish. This whole thing is a pile of shrubbish. I put my bottles in this bin, I put my trash in this bin, and my shrubbish in this bin. No, no, the, his mother is not a buffalo. She's like butchering and preparing a buffalo for dinner in the house. She was never actually a buffalo. But we can, we can change it up. We could retcon it. <laughs> Boy, now that you're a froggy being, I want you to go inside and hunt your mother almost to extinction. Yes, father. All right, that little district's kind of got some character to it. That's got a little flavor, right? Um, okay. See, now I feel that sort of my Jarl thing, since I did it at the beginning, it's actually a little too specific. Like, actually, I can't believe this, you guys, but basically this little district right here, I think I finally figured out how to get this, this project done. I got my, my style figured out here. So that was quicker. It's looser, but it fills the space in a way that I enjoy more. And um, it took me this long just to find that point. And now I have nothing left in my life but my frogginess. I've been forsaken, even by my buffalo mother and my lizard father. I have only frogginess inside my froggy heart. I have froggy dreams of flies for dinner. Wow. Just wow. Just freaking wow. Okay, these little rows of homes are interesting. Not really that fantasy-ish, though. Um, how about getting into some, some wizardy things? Where's my printout? For reasons I'll never understand, this... I mean, this is tiny. Look at this text. How can anyone read that? Oh, my God. It hurts my eyes to even look at that. Okay, there's a barracks... There's a Jarl thing. There's a market. Ooh, metal area. Metal working district. Yay! Let's do that. Uh, does he have an indication of where he wants it? Metal working district. Good God, that font is small. Six. What's two then? Barracks. Six. Boy. Man, is that specific. You know what else I would like to do is... 
um, the wall on the outside. <laughs> but first, I'm going to do the metal area. Anvil Town. Do 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 ba dee da up dee da skip bap ba doodle loop boo dee skip bop a dingle bong boo doo boo doo boo boo skip bop do bop a diddle dee doo up skip bop a doodle loo this is the main metal shop here but then there's gonna be more than one I mean right um, so this is kind of this secondary roof, the roof, and then from that, I mean, you got to have this kind of silly multi-piece smokestack thing, right? Every good fantasy town has that thing. It's got little rivets in it and stuff. I like those uh, little machines on the Jetsons too that are like That's a good sound. That's a good sound. Something's wrong with me today. I've got behavioral issues. Mother! We've hunted you almost to extinction. But we have used every part of you. Either for hides or your bones to make tools and weapons. Well done, boy. Thank you, Father. I was wrong about your frogginess, boy. It's proven a boon for our family. And now, to celebrate, we will hunt your mother almost to extinction. Yes, Father. These are some swords and stuff they're working on in here. And they got like these vents on the ceiling because it gets so hot in this joint. And then I was I, 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 I'm going to put it over here. I can't talk. I'm going to put it right over here. They need some bellows going here, bro Cephas. I need bellows, bro. I need brolos. <laughs> it's got a round back like that, and then it's got this accordion thing. Like this. Got these two little sticks here. And it kind of penetrates into the building like ha huh, through a little valve like ha huh, like a little thing right ha huh. and then cha 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 and then there's like some boards across here cha 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 and then these little thingies there we go at least it's different looking than the other stuff I like that part. Hello, Chachi. Are you a frog? Why, yes, I am. I'm the only frog in this area. This is my sort of frog dom territory or domain. I see. Don't ever speak to me or my son again. <laughs> oh, my God. A big-ass anvil. Sure. Why not? It's right out front here for uh, public use. Sort of like a community anvil, you know. You know what? There's two of them. You know, like in a normal town, you'd have like a uh, sort of a little exercise station that the public can use. But this is a dwarven town, so they just have public anvils. Daddy, can we go and use the public anvil today? I want to reveal my froggy blacksmithing skills. You don't even have thumbs, boy. You ruin everything. I'm going to tell my mum. That's a charming threat, boy, but we've hunted her to, to extinction. <laughs> the bison no longer proudly roams these plains. Oh, father! Woogie, 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 woogie. All right. 
I want one of these cool little signs. And I want it now. Look at that. I want it all. And I want it. Dun, dun, dun. I am hungry. I'm hungry, guys. That's going to slow things down, I'll tell you what. There you go. Hammer sign. Hammer sign. Oh, oh, stop. Hammer sign. No, his legs are human, remember? His hands and legs are human. The rest of him is a frog. Stop. Hammer sign. Oh, oh. sure when you guys tuned in what you're really hoping for is to hear me whistle MC Hammer. Who could dream of much more really? What dreamer would dare? Stop! Hammer sign. Oh, oh. Like I'm hungry like in a freaky way. I'm freaking out with hunger. Ah! Shrubbish! Stop! Hammer time! Oh, oh. I gotta say, doing a city is a lot harder than doing an overworld map because I don't get to do like a bunch of nature. Everything is a building. And I'm just like, dude, I'm dying over here. It's been one hour. We've hunted your mother to extinction. So she no longer proudly roams these plains. And I am still here drawing this city. I don't know what a barracks looks like. I guess a barracks would be like a series of matching long buildings. So let's do that. Why is there always a barracks anyway? Every fantasy town has a barracks. Wigwam teepee, wigwam teepee. Relax, you're too tense. Stop. Hammer sign. Oh, oh. Well, I'm pleased with the overlap there on the barracks. That part makes me happy. Or at least a semblance of happiness. I no, long I no longer recall the, the taste of food. Oh, Sam. Sam, I think I'm going to have to go cannibal on you. I'm sorry, Sam, but I'm going to eat your elbows. Oh, Mr. Frodo. Barracks are a trope people like. And it also makes sense for Towns Guard and such. Amen to that, my brother. Amen to that. Amen to that. I don't really like the, the, the gimmick of like big cartoony shapes on buildings, like big hammers and stuff. Uh, it's not really my style. It's kind of a fun idea, but not really a thing that I do. You know, like you put like a hammer right here, right? Eh, yeah, that could be cool. E -booby -be -booby. E -booby -be -booby. I think these little um e -booby -booby, these little walls are going to continue. Because I like them and I want to be a frog. Actually, wait a minute. I rewinded the story, didn't I? He he already is a frog. He has the legs and hands of a human being, and the rest of him is frog. He's a being now, sort of a creature, or a frogman. Father, I've changed my mind, unfortunately. I'm having the froggy-isms reversed. 
I want to be a lizard like you, father. I want to make you proud. You've always made me proud, son. Even as a frog being. I'd like to be that one lizard with the frills around its neck that can run across water. I thought you'd say that, boy. But first I'm going to beat you. <laughs> Please stop beating me, father. I just want to be a frill lizard and run across water. It's too late, I've committed to the beating. <clears throat> These are like little, um, like spears or something. I'll sharpen them in a second. You guys, I'm losing it. I'm losing it. I'm, I'm, I need my breakfasts. I need about 14 breakfasts. I normally don't need so many breakfasts, but today I'm in. I have a need. I, I don't know if everybody's still here, but I'm still here. There's still 110 of you awesome people here. You guys are crazy. Is this the lore behind froglodites? No, because they have froggy, you know, they don't have human legs and hands. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry about the whole frog lizard buffalo family thing. I don't know where that came from. Getting a little loopy troops over here. Loopy troops up in the place to be. Um, I do need to get like some sort of chevroni things going. Maybe these could employ that look. Stop! Have a time! Oh, oh! My, my, my chevron roofs are so hard. Make you say, oh my lord, got the barracks in my town. Gonna draw these lines until they're down. Ooh. Gonna get real funky. Draw chevrons on my roof. My roof. I got chevrons on my roof. My, my, my chevrons, oh, oh, so hard. Make you say, oh, my Lord. I'm going to do some shrubbish on these barracks, guys, so brace yourselves. My, my, my music is so so hard. You say, oh my lord. Man, is that stuff dumb. You guys noticing what I'm noticing here, which is like, I just need to, I need to match my Jarl house better or change my Jarl house to match my town, which is probably the smarter step to take. Because my music is oh so hot. Make you say, oh my lord. My son is a frog. What have I done wrong? What have I done in life to deserve this froggy son? Carry on my froggy son. <clears throat> There'll be a pond when you are done. You've got human hands and legs. And don't you cry no more. No! Man, would that be a sad sight to see a frog just sitting there crying? I'll just break your heart. You know, frogs are really generally optimistic, so it would just be like, man, what must have happened? Ooh, I like that. A little parallel lines, something about that feels nice. Okay, I was going to sharpen these little thingies 
And the way I do that is just with white ink. And I just see pop, pop, pop the egg in the bag like that. Pop, pop, pop the egg into the bag. M I X the fly. Oh man. How does it go? Um. Pop, pop, pop the egg into. Oh, it's it's drop, drop, drop the egg into the bowl. M I X the flower into the mold. <laughs> Punch, kick. It's all in the mind. If you wanna test me, I think you'll find the more that you meet you, then I'm gonna beat you or something like that. I can't remember the words. Can you guys remember the words? Punch, kick. It's all in the mind. You're not going to see a lot of um, D and D themed drawing streams with Parappa the Rappa all at the same spot. This is this is innovative entertainment, guys. Hey, look at that. Yeah, my my center house is just feeling a little out of place with all that noise that it has. But maybe that's just because the rest isn't done. Hmm. Pop, 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 the egg into the bowl. M I X the flower into the mold. Uh, metalworking district. You know what they need? A bunch of like raw iron sitting out here in a, in a pile. And, uh, yep, I'm going to go for another 15 or so, and we're going to call this this stream done even though I'm not going to finish this piece it's uh it's going to be a really really nice day out today so I should probably figure out a way to get out and do something I don't know anybody got any suggestions what do you do on like a really nice sunny day when it's Saturday what do you even do it's so rarely sunny here that I don't know what I'm supposed to do you know what I need? I need a lawn chair. Any thoughts on the recent explosion of published community content? Uh, you mean for um, for ICRPG, John? Or for what community? D and D? What, what you? Where you at? Walk. Oh, I walk every day. Trust me. I have two big dogs. I I walk for hours. <laughs> uh, who's Who's doing all the the uh, published community content? What do you mean? Oh, for ICRPG? Um, well, I mean, the community's awesome. It's always been awesome. I think it just rises and falls a little bit. And I think that second edition is, there's enough of an improvement there that I think it matters to, to people, you know, feeling more like they're working on solid ground, like set concrete rather than it's shifting. Are you interested in the upcoming second edition of Pathfinder? Absolutely. Are you kidding? I can't wait to see what they do. It's going to be fascinating. I probably won't bring it to the table, but I'll dang sure get that core book when it comes out and and mine it and learn and yearn. But I've never even really made it through the Pathfinder character creation, and I do a lot of character creation just for fun at home. Just get a new system, sit down with a piece of paper, and make a character. That's the kind of stuff I do. But with Pathfinder, I just there's too much cross cross page turning and stuff. I wind up giving up. Uh, I see though how you know people could really get into the you know building synergy and all that stuff. You know, rock on. I'm not like bagging on it or anything. It's just sort of not not how I how I do my jam. Okay, they got some coiled up steel here as well, and then they got some little. Sp like buckets of stuff. Well, you know, we need a little well too. So this kind of noise is what the Jarl house has. It also has this line, which is driving me nuts. There we go, fixed. This one too, boom, okay. This line is driving me nuts. <laughs> yeah, boy. Here. I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. I feel like Tony Stark when he came out of the, came out of that prison camp.
Man, that's a dusty chestnut, huh? That was a long time ago. That was... Jeez, when was that? That was 2009, wasn't it? Just found your channel. Not even five minutes ago. Kevin Chaotic. I was watching your Trap Theory video. Trap Theory. Hey! Boltimus. Now that's a fun question that I can chew on for a while. How do you like online role-playing compared to in-person playing? Well, I gotta say, I was skeptical. Um, and nothing is as fun as being at a table with your friends and, and having a good time and playing, right? And just nothing is that is that good. But the thing about playing a lot online is not so much the online play experience, you know, which has ups and downs to it. I actually think Roll20 is one of the most powerful map creators, especially if you use it a certain way, um, as far as being a DM. But what I was gonna say is not necessarily the role-playing experience is what I love so much about playing online. It's the player access that you get. So, you know, one of the, the great dilemmas of our hobby is finding the right group to play with. And this doesn't just mean your friends, right? Like your, your best friends are now your role-playing group. We all know that it, that seldom doesn't necessarily happen. It's, it's a group who wants to play games, right? And sometimes there's nobody. There's nobody around that wants to play, and that can really slow down the whole hobby for you. But since there's so many people online, and you can meet so many different people, you can really meet the kinds of players that fit your game, uh, you know, that fit your style, and that also, you know, become your friends over time, and you can really get good, good group synergy going. Um, and for that reason, I absolutely love playing online. Because it, you know, it can be hard to get in real life, you know, people to show up on the reg, you know, or people that are into what you're into. Let's say you're into playing like Rifts, right? Or you're into playing Savage Worlds or something that isn't necessarily center line like D&D 5e, right? It can be very hard to find people to play with. But online, the community is so massive, you can meet some people. Maybe not all of them are going to fit your style, but in time, you'll meet some groups that are going to fit. Find people to play Rifts with you. And for that reason, I absolutely love playing online. Both of my games right now, I play twice a week, pretty much every week, are online. And um, I really also think Roll20 has a lot of features that I don't use. I don't use 90% of the features. But for navigating and creating rooms on the fly and responding to player actions and sort of making a world out of what they decide rather than on planning is super powerful in Roll20. Even backtracking, which can be hard at the real table, right? Like, let's say I'm using a battle mat, and I draw out some stuff, and then my players later want to go back to that area. Do I have to, like, draw it again? Or, like, how do I manage that? And so you, you tend to get, like, one-way worlds sometimes at a real table. But with Roll20, you just keep that screen, and if they want to go back to that location, you just, you're right back there, and you can have any number of pages you need, and it's like, wow. So... Both as a DM and socially speaking, I absolutely love playing online. It's not quite the same. I do notice that people are a little more comfortable role-playing online too because you're not face-to-face. -face. You're seeing me in a little window and uh, you can get a little more into your character and not feel quite so silly. <laughs> so I think it's great. Feasibility of NPC interaction. Uh, what? I'm not sure. The Holy Grail is finding a solo RPG engine. Well, that's, there's a few out there that are pretty cool. I kind of, in a way, a part of the hobby for me is playing solo. You know, it's creating boards and videos and, um, you know, reading books that I don't really plan on playing the systems. I just want to get into the, into the systems and learn them for fun. That's kind of a solo element of role-playing. You know, like... Um, Last week, I sat down and made a few characters for myself in Numenera. Just for the fun of learning about Numenera. And I didn't, you know, do a battle or any scenarios or any solo story or mechanics really of any kind. I just made the characters and kind of tried some roles. And then right away, I got the idea to do the DIY dice. And I was just like, ooh, I'm going to get into that. And kind of wandered off and started doing that. And, um, you know, so the hobby has a lot of sides to it. 
doesn't have to be one way. You know what I realize? Another thing about this Jarl thing that is a little bit standing out is these sort of rocky shapes. They aren't repeated elsewhere, so I need to get some little rocky shapes. Like there's a few rocks just kind of sitting in this town because it's dwarven, right? Like here's just this rock out here, just behind this guy's house. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to zoom out here. Uh, most of my players don't have English as first language. Oh, yeah, that's, that's cool. Yeah, you know, I don't think it's the Jarl house that's quite so wrong. It's the hill. The hill doesn't fit. So check it out. I'm going to face it instead of hiding from it. Like, I drew this a little too harshly. Because I don't think I knew my style when I was getting started. There you go. So now I'm just going to do this sort of simpler design. See this? There we go. That fits way better with the style. I just had to face the truth with a bright and courageous heart. And I was avoiding it. See that? just so much simpler. Now I'm going to shrub it up. From a zoomed out perspective at the top of the map, it looks like you have two nuclear power plant cooling towers. Well, that's exactly what I described them as that I wanted to draw, so I guess I win. Okay, shrubbish. This hill, they've got some nice decorative shrubbish, but it also serves a tactical purpose. It's a sort of a fortification. A sortification. <laughs> Good God, I'm losing my mind. I'm going loopy. I would like to be a frog someday. Frogs don't feel pain or sadness. They're just bright hearted and leapy. So leapy. The leaper must awaken. Whoever threw that comment up, I salute you. I can't believe there's still 112 of you hanging around. That is crazy. Thank you, you guys. Thanks for tuning in. I'm just trying to make a living here. And I'm getting very, very hungry. And I'm also going to need to show my my client sort of what how much time has translated into how much map and make sure that I'm not overscoping this project. because this easily has two more hours in it, if not quite a bit more than that. So you can't be over scoping and blowing people's budgets up. That's not cool. If there is no Dwarf Noble, isn't a thing, I will be a disappoint. Dwarf Noble. Oh man, look at that nice shrubbish. You see now how the Jarl House fits the map. I'm, I'm really happy about that change. That makes me very glad. That's a relief, because I was feeling weird. Denial always makes you feel weird. But you know, sometimes it's all we got in life. It's a powerful coping mechanism. <laughs> okay, cool. Much, much better fit. Much better fit. Yeah, and you know, I was I haven't really been doing stairs this way. I've been sort of blobbing them in like this. So I'm just going to blob in. Just get this to fit. It's because I did this first and I just wasn't I was just I was crazy in the brain, guys. I got brain crazy. Well, the tests are in and we're afraid you're brain crazy. No. No. I thought I was safe. I have human legs and human hands. Yes, you do, but you're brain crazy. And for that, there is no treatment. Dun, dun, dun. Should the inside curve of the Jarl's Road be filled in? Should it be filled in? Sure, why not? 
Should the inside curve of the Yarl's Road be filled in? Carry on my Yarl's Road. There'll be peace when you are done. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, before I go completely brain crazy, he mentioned doing a weird door. Don't you cry no door. No. Bom bom. Cha cha. Chi cha. Wow, guys, look at that. That is coming together. It's just a lot of work. So I guess uh, this is kind of maybe useful for folks is if you want to embark on a project like this, that was an hour and a half of drawing time, really with no backtracking or much hesitation. And that's all I got as far as this total development of this city. So I'm maybe a quarter of the way into it. So that's looking like at least four hours work, probably more like six and I'm just gonna have to say whoa on that but if you're gonna embark on something like that uh, something like this you could be in for that kind of scale of work so i'm going to call it 108 of you awesome people hung out right to the end here thank you so much for joining me on saturday to do a little bit of drawing it's a good way to start the day get your practice in or your work in this case um and you know that's uh, that's how we do it up in here in rune hammer um Keep an eye out for things. Things are coming up. Uh, let's see. We got the uh, third Runehammer novel is it's coming very soon. And then the trilogy. The reason I haven't really announced the third novel, even though it's done, um, is because the trilogy is really, I think, the better buy for everybody. So until the trilogy is out, I don't really want to announce the third one because it's cooler to buy the trilogy. The trilogy is almost 500 pages. It's awesome. Um, anyways, that's going to be coming up. I'm doing a whole series of videos about ICRPG, about all the questions and uh, sort of stuff that has been coming up, and I'm just going to finally commit and support that system as much as I possibly can, really. Um, I'm going to be at RageCon in Reno in uh, the end of June, so keep your eye on Facebook for that. I hope you guys come out and have a beer with me. Um, and then, yeah, I don't know. The, I think there's this next video coming up about doing rooms uh, with terrain. And sort of getting back to some of these topics that have been collecting dust a little bit. So if you guys have seen the uh, Architectural Unities video, I wanted to kind of get back to that and kind of almost do it again in a way. Um, discuss that topic again. I think it's a really strong topic. Could help a lot of people that are using 3D stuff at their table. Um, yeah. Who knows what else is going on? It's like the weather's starting to get good. So who knows... I'm not sure how it's all going to come together. Like maybe do some stuff outside, have some campfires and stream those. Um, we'll see. But you guys have a great weekend. Go make the world a little bit more better place than it was yesterday. All right? And have fun. Keep it real. Don't steal. You're always going to get a deal. Uh, enjoy that sunshine. And uh, well, let's just let's just ski daddle on out of here. And uh, thanks for tuning in, everybody. So uh, yeah. Yep. Bye, Simon. Later, Pyronide. Renegade, Finn, John, everybody, thanks a lot for tuning in from all over the world. Hello from the Ukraine, back to the Great Cascades up in here in Washington. I'm going to go live my life. But would love to see if over a couple years if it's changed in your opinion. Pyronide, that's a great idea, talking about timers, and let's update that whole topic. There's lots to do. Post up, email me, see you all on the internet and beyond. Hanker and Fernow, signing off. Chada che na no. A chara chena he, a chate hano chane, who chane tat no tane he, chano tatne hane, chat, chat. <laughs>